Hi guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. It has been a long time coming, but our king bed is finally done. We have been wanting to upgrade to a king size mattress for quite some time now, and we actually partnered up in this video with Helix Sleep who provided the mattress and sponsored this video. You can check out more about them using the link down in the description below. And this has been a long time coming. We actually got the mattress in April and have been sleeping on it since then, and it took me that long to get this build completed. There was so much milling, recutting, remilling, and so forth, but I think in the end, it is absolutely worth it. If you guys are interested in this build, there are plans for it. Link down in the description below where you can go over to DIYTyler.com where you can find those plans, other plans, and maybe if you want some sweet merch, you can find it over there as well. Now, if this isn't the definition of a giant project, I don't know what is. Now, I will admit that I brought some of this on by myself because I was only able to pick up four quarter cherry at the time I picked up this rough stock. I would have preferred to get eight quarter, but they didn't have it when I needed to pick it up to allow it enough time to acclimate. So I ran with the four quarter and that brought on a lot of the extra work because I need to joint it, glue it together, then rip it down again and joint it for a second time for every single board to make sure that I got the one and an eighth inch thickness that I was after. I started over at the miter saw, cut them down to rough length and made sure to mark both sides based off of my plans so that when I cut one side of that board off, I would still have a reference number to go off of. I then move over to the bandsaw to rip my boards down to rough width. I like to use the bandsaw for this task as it results in less material lost and less sawdust. It was then over to the thicknessing department of the shop. I just upgraded both of these tools. I got a new 8 inch helical head jointer specifically for working on this cherry as it usually resulted in terrible burnout with straight blades, but these new helical heads are fantastic. I jointed a face and a side to prepare for moving over to the planer. The planer is recently upgraded to a helix head and it resulted in spectacular cuts that were pretty much ready for final sanding right out of the machine. Now I didn't have to run every single board through the planer as I only needed parallel surfaces on one of three boards in every glue up. That's because I'm going to be sandwiching three boards together and then ripping them in half again to make sure I get the thickness that I want. So I added glue and then sandwiched the parallel thickness board in between two boards that were only jointed to save me a little bit of time. And I'm using Tight Bond 3 for a few reasons. It gives me a little bit more open time and it has a darker dye in it, which will match the cherry better than a yellow dye glue. I would glue up an assembly, close all the parallel clamps on it, and then glue up a second assembly. Open up my clamps, add it in, and repeat over and over and over again until I had something that was about 18 inches thick. It was a giant slab of wood. After letting my giant beam sit for a few days to make sure it had thoroughly cured, I broke it apart. I actually had to use a crowbar to get some of the glue that had squeezed out broken open. It was then time to start all over again. It was over to the jointer, then the bandsaw, back to the planer to get everything down to the final thickness that I needed. Now that all that milling is finally done, it is time to cut everything down to its final dimensions. I started over at the miter saw, being very careful using my plans to make sure I didn't mess up any of these pieces that I've worked so hard on up to this point. For the final width cuts, I'm going to be using the table saw and I changed out my Amana blades from a combination blade to a dedicated glue line rip blade. This results in a better cut that is easier on the saw as it has less teeth. As you can see, there are a lot of different pieces and you're continually cutting off one side. I was careful to make sure that I referenced those numbers and marked them again on the side that I had just cut off, so I always made sure I had a number on both sides. As you can see behind me there, we are finally done milling and I've got all of the faces that will be facing out when the bed is done facing up on the workbench. I want all of the faces the same direction so that I am referencing the fence 
the same for every single board. What we're gonna do here is use a trim router with the fence that comes with this particular unit and an auxiliary fence right here. And then I'm going to be using a quarter inch Amana bit to make our quarter inch dados. The depth does vary depending on the piece. We're gonna take this right to our board, slide it back and forth many times to make the dado cut. It is gonna be a super messy job. While this step left an absolute disaster in the shop, I was very pleased with the results from this quick jig that I had whipped up. Definitely a technique that I can use in the future with excellent results. Now that all those mortises are cut, it is over to the router table to add the cutest little chamfer you've ever seen onto all sides of every single board. The bed is obviously going to be assembled with hardware and I use my drill press with a quarter inch brad point bit to drill those holes consistently every single time. I whipped up this quick fence on my drill press table so that I could reference every corner of the boards up into the drill press the same every single time. And I got creative using my tripod as a third hand for the longer bed frame pieces. And then it is time for some sanding. Thankfully, with the upgrades to the helical heads on my thicknessing machines, I only had to use 180 grit on the edges which I cut with a table saw. Everything else I was able to go directly to 220 grit, which is the recommended grit for the finish that I'm going to be applying to this bed. Before getting too excited about applying finish, there are a few things that need to be pre-assembled before getting that finish in the way of a good wood glue bond. The two side rails are going to need this cross section added in there for the cross supports of the mattress. And then the head and footboard main rails need to be joined with the first cross beam or ladder beam I guess, whatever you want to call it. And this will allow us to attach the metal to attach the rest of those cross beams into place. I was very careful at this point to make sure my spacing was correct for the 2 and 4 inch metal that act as the head and footboard hardware. For the finish on this bed I am going to be using some pre-catalyzed lacquer and a semi-gloss finish from General Finishes. Now I've been using General Finishes for a long time, you've heard me mention them before, but this stuff is amazing. I thought General Finishes high performance top coat was great, but it doesn't even hold a candle to this pre-catalyzed lacquer. The downside is it does have to be sprayed. Some of their other finishes are able to be applied with a brush. This pre-catalyzed lacquer is a spray only option, but it went on super easy, laid out very, very smooth and is dried hard as a tack. If you guys have been around for a while, you'll actually see a couple of my past projects. You see the sawhorses over there on the left. You see my Harbor Freight hack turntable that I'm spraying on in the middle and then the folding door drying rack on the right hand side which I've actually used over and over again. The metal for this bed is all custom made but it's very very simple. If you don't have the tools to do it, I'll bet you you can find a custom shop in your town. We have one in our small town that could do it for you for a couple bucks. The main hardware is flat stock that is 4 by 1 quarter inch thick and 2 by 1 quarter inch thick. I cut this down on my cold cut saw. The four corner posts are angle iron that I cut down with my portable bandsaw and then welded a tab on the inside just so it wouldn't cut into the carpet so much. And then as the bed frame is heavy and the mattress is really heavy, I added some metal legs underneath so we would never get any sagging. This is one area where our previous bed frame had failed and needed a little bit of work, but these metal ones will hold up forever. I then used some rattle can self-etching primer and a couple coats of Rust-Oleum 2X 
top coat in semi-gloss black. So it is time to assemble the head and footboard. I got my hardware all ready to go, black and painted up real nicely. And I got my plans here so I have all of my measurements, a couple spacers to make sure I have everything uniform. But I already know that I'm gonna have a trouble with this middle connection right here. That is because I had to go back and open these outside mortises up a little bit, probably not even a 64th of an inch. And that was to account for the paint on these pieces of hardware. I wasn't able to get to the inside one as it was already glued to the head and foot rails. So I'll have to hammer that one in and then I can tape it off to put the last coats of lacquer on here. I got one coat of lacquer on. I brought them in to sand them and I figured it'd be a good time to measure out and mark the hardware for the metal and I can drill those holes as these next coats are drying up. Marking the holes in the flat stock was relatively straightforward. Just make sure you have everything aligned and your boards in the proper layout and orientation that you need. Put that flat stock in place and then use a punch to make sure you have everything marked out. Marking out the legs is not much more complicated. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you always are carrying the proper orientation. Right now I am working on the headboard left side, which would happen to be number two for me as I made a quadrant starting at the front footboard, which would be number one. And then I always had an arrow pointing towards the wall to make sure I had the proper orientation. All of the holes in the metal were drilled using a quarter inch bit. Where I could, I brought the piece over to the drill press, but where I couldn't, I used a cordless drill to drill those holes. So we are ready to assemble now and I wanted to talk about the hardware that I'm using for just a second. This is all black hardware button head hex screws and things have changed a little bit throughout the build. Originally I thought my boards were going to be quite a bit thicker and that I was going to recess the bolt and washer on the back into the wood. But I ended up thinner than I wanted so I am not comfortable making that recess and messing up the integrity of the wood. So I'm going to kind of break a little rule here and I'm gonna forego the flat washers. Normally, I would do a flat washer, I'd put my bolt through, I'd do a flat washer on the back, then I would either use a nylock nut or a split washer and a regular nut on the back. But because my boards are kind of in that space that I don't wanna recess it and, in, and ruin the integrity, I'm gonna forego the washers, the flat washers, I'm just gonna put my bolt in, I'm gonna do a split washer on the back, and then I am going to put a regular nut on the back there as well. Again, these are easy to change later on. If I see them pulling into the wood, I can get longer bolts, get uh, the, put the flat washers on there, which I already have, and either put the nylock on or continue using the split washer. Remember that we marked the legs going clockwise from the front left corner and pointed the arrow to the back wall. So this is the appropriate leg for the footboard. Now that we are mostly done with the assembly of the footboard, it is time to add the last piece, which is the top rail. I made sure I had it aligned and then used the footboard itself to mark out to make sure I had perfect alignment. Then using a quarter inch bit in the router, I cut the three mortises, one for each side and one for that four inch middle flat stock. And then making sure that it presses in place and off camera, I did add some CA glue along the entire top rail there to hold this permanently in place. I use CA glue as wood glue would not stick since finish has already been applied. And that is it for the footboard, looking good. And the headboard was much the same, just bigger, heavier, and a little more unwieldy. The only difference is there are two shelves built into either side so that you can put a watch, you can put your phone, or any other knickknacks that you might take with you to bed. These shelves were quickly assembled using fast-acting CA glue, 
18 gauge brad nails to reinforce that glue and some pocket holes to fasten the shelves into place. Now you might cringe as to why I use pocket holes in cherry, so DIY, what trash work, who do you think you are, but they are a functioning joint that will work fantastic in this light load situation. Assembly was very straightforward. Just make sure that your side rails are the correct numbered, which we took care of earlier in the build. And you definitely need some help to guide everything together and hold everything straight and level so that you can properly align the holes. Once the rails are installed, there are two small pieces that need to be installed into the middle of the lower rail of the head and footboard. I didn't install these before assembling everything because I wanted to make sure that the alignment was correct so that our cross supports would not have a bow in them. This pine cross beam is going to span these small pieces that we just put in place and this is going to accept the metal hardware that we assembled earlier in the build. Now I did add some self leveling feet in the form of a bolt and nut to the bottom here just to make sure I could have everything perfectly level. The pine cross boards are 1x4s and they're all spaced evenly out at 3.5 inches. They are screwed in place with one 1 and 5 8 screw on either side, although I do think that is an optional step as they are not going to go anywhere once the mattress is on top. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this video has been brought to us by Helix Sleep, whose Lux mattress the wife and I have been sleeping on for almost four months now. You can head over to helixsleep.com, take a two minute ish quiz, which will quiz you on the type of sleeper that you are. The wife and I happen to have the same quiz results and we chose to go with a King Lux mattress, which is a little bit thicker than the standard with a more cushiony pillow top. But whether you're a side sleeper, stomach sleeper, back sleeper, sleep really hot, that quiz will pick the perfect mattress for you. And we actually have a couple of ultra cool pillows up there as well. And it's almost eerie how cool they feel throughout the night. Head over to Helix Sleep using the link down in the description below. Take your quiz and match yourself up to the perfect mattress of your dreams. You actually get 100 nights totally risk free. If you don't like it, they'll come and pick it up for you. But you will love it, folks. The wife and I love this mattress. I've recommended it to my parents and a couple good friends of mine already as well. Thanks to Helix Sleep for supporting the channel. Well, that is a wrap, folks, and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this project. It is probably in the top few projects that I am most proud of as it turned out awesome and is solid as a rock. Now, one thing that the wife is not proud of is how I made her take all the pillows off here so that we could actually see the wood bed frame, which is what the video was about. Again, I will have plans for these, link to them down in the description below, or you can just head over to DIYTyler.com where you can find those plans, many others, or maybe you just want a sweet, super, super soft shirt or hat that is all available over there as well. If you did enjoy this video, please hammer that thumbs up button as it helps us out a ton and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.